Spread your legs. Clear. Let's go. Yeah, 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 you already know. Welcome back. It's your boy, Pistol Pete, and that y'all talk. Today we got my boy. Boom, 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 boom. What you going to do? Flesh and Bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony, the legendary group. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, 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 I know these these brothers, man, for a long time, since they was kids, uh, when I first came home. Uh we was on tour together. We've been in videos together. If y'all do, we, we've been in movies together. You know, for those that don't know, you know, uh, I've, been, I've been in movies with uh, with the group. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, the name of the movie is uh, I Try. You know what I'm saying? And um, and Flesh and Bone was the only one that was never there because at the peak of their career, when they started popping crazy and all that, Flesh and Bone went up top. He went to jail, went to prison. And... Uh, and today we got him. He's back. He's been home. You know what I mean? He's my brother. Uh, we've been sharing a lot of time together since he's been home. So, you know, with that all being said, I want to welcome from the legendary group, my brother, Flesh and Bone, to that y'all talk with your boy Pistol P. Let's get it. When you're in that Tampa Bay area, make sure you reach out to my boy Gus Torres, man, if you want anything that has to do with real estate, man. Make sure you hit them up. You get the lowest prices and the finest houses, man. Trust me when I tell you. But don't forget to mention my name. You already know that Pistol P to get you that early discount. And that's my brother, man, Gus Torres. You already know, out in the Tampa Bay area. Make sure you hit him up, man. Sell, buy, invest, all that. Make sure you hit him up, man, because he focused with that out there. Tampa Bay, you already know, it's your boy Pistol, man. Get at me. You already know what it is, your boy Pistol Pete. It's dog in the yard. Today's that yard talk. You already know who I got in the building. Flesh and bone from Bone Thugs and Harmony. My brother for a long time, you know what I mean? He was gone for a minute and all that. We finally catching up. And we already, you already know he here on that yard talk. It's your boy. What's good, Flesh? Uh, you got a Pistol Pete, man. Thanks for having me, man. Absolutely, brother. How's it going, man? man. Yeah, that's been, every, been, been working, kicking up dust, trying to keep it moving. Facts. Uh, rocking and rolling, uh, God is good, man. Been able to uh, staying out the way, staying stayin blessed, staying out, stayin out the way, ducking and dodging, man. Got to stay out the way, do my thing, stay on top, of the top of top of game. Man. How long you been home now? I've been home about good, good, good eleven, twelve years, and uh, which is a I would have never thought that, but I did have a couple of hiccups, you know, um, along the way. Had to go back, did, a, did about four, six months. County. You did? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, because that moment when you first came home and shit. Yeah. You, yeah. So you went back on the violation. Yeah, I went back on the violation and thought it was a rap. Mm. Over some same shit, you know, you know. All right, so for those people, you know, for the for the people that I mean, mm -hmm. for those that don't know you, but I know a lot of people do know you, but right. um I just wanna just get into like a little bit what you know the, what was your what was your upbringing like, you know what I'm saying, as far as siblings, you know, mom, pops, you know what I'm saying? Right. And, yeah, a little history about yourself and all that, and and, and when you and, and up to the part where you went to jail and stuff like that, and got to start getting yourself in problems and all that. Oh, you know, so so it goes back. You know, I'm working on a memoir too, so I don't. I, I kind of like want to say I don't want to give up too much because I'm a I'm a I'm a uh, official author now, I'm working on books and shit of that nature, the flesh and bone experience, the bone thug experience, stuff of that nature. So I'm I'm gonna I'm roll it out. too. I ain't even you know I'm gonna roll it out though, but. The art upbringing, bro, I would say is one of the uh, typical ones of coming up out of the ghetto so much. Not so much the ghetto because we really didn't end up into the ghetto until certain incidents that um, you know, me and Lil Lay got into an incident where we um, um, set fire to my grandmother's house and everything. And from there on, she got booted out and was from place to place after that and ended up in the ghetto. So for those for those people, who, who's your... Who, Who's your brother? Like, I mean, like, because you're, you, you're talking about your brother, you're saying his name, but for those that, you know, don't know. My siblings, my brothers, Steve, a.k.a. Lazy Bone, Stu D's, Stuart, they both my uh, younger brothers. I'm the eldest. 
I'm the eldest brother of the three, my moms, my pops. And um, it was, uh, it was uh, I was already... We was raised, we, we, not to cut you up, but where, where you uh, mm -hmm. was uh, born and raised? Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. All right, now, now we can move forward. Go ahead. So Cleveland, man. Cleveland is where it all started. Remington. Um, um, Remington was the block. And from Remington, East 99, where Crazy Bone is from. Wishbone grew up on the block with me over there on Remington. And um, it, was, it was one of them ones that um, my moms had to get out on her own. And, you know, take us with us. And we went from city to city, damn near state to state in an unstable situation. And, you know, all we was doing was looking for a way out. Mm -hmm. You dig? Me and my brothers, it was close as possible. I pretty much consider raising my little brother, Stu. When he was born, I was nine years old when he when he came into the picture. And um, and just, just as close knit as any other family, you feel me? and struggling, mom dealing with them being on the government dole and all that other shit. Right. Man, we was determined to do something. We used to have talks as kids like, man, we gonna make it about this shit. We gonna do something. We don't know what it is, but we gonna do something to become famous. We already had dreams. We already knew kids on the swing talking about, man, we gonna be rich, man. We gonna be famous one day. Only we just didn't know that music was that way. Right. Until, mm. until we got hooked up with the homie Crazy Bone, formed a group called the Band-Aid Boys. It was a little teenage rock, you know, we was trying to be- What age young guys were? That was about 11, 12 years old, 12 years old. The Band-Aid Boys, one of the hottest groups coming up out of the hood and everything in Cleveland <laughs> and everything, it was amazing. And uh, I was heavy into sports and all of that. I was trying to, I thought my ticket at that time was gonna be sports. Okay. I, was a, I was a baller. I was balling, jumping out the gym. At a, at little, I was a little nigga jumping out the gym, dunking on niggas at like 12, 13 years old. That's how deep into the shit I was. I thought I was going to be a little Michael Jordan or whatever like that. Didn't work out that way, though. Right. I still kicked ass in high school and college and all that, doing that shit. And, um, mm. you know, playing in school, you know, very uh, academic, athletic, economics. Economics was my, um, my uh, study of choice. A major and everything, philosophy, of course, undergrads and all of that stuff, studying all uh, the schools of different schools of thoughts and stuff of that nature. Right. You know, being on that type of level, business, your economics opened up a, a real business side on understanding how the markets work and stuff like that. But uh, for the most part, it was still schooling in the streets, balling, kept me out of trouble. And um, we was determined the whole inspiration of the music coming up listening to the beastie boys fat boys run dmc of course nwa all of that you feel right. me and uh and uh we started you know trying to do new edition you know um doing little talent shows for whoever would be willing to let the kids entertain them and everything get bored get creative and start so you started just start like rapping the stuff, or you started singing? Absolutely singing, singing. First, 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 everybody wanted to be, you know, the Bell Bib, the Booth, the Booth's and Board, the New Edition, boys, <laughs> doing them steps and all of that stuff and everything. So, but then we started getting real heavy into the rap. Probably wrote my first rap, or tried to write my first rap when I was about about twelve. I would say twelve, maybe earlier than that. Okay. And then, uh, and uh, but around junior high school, that's when I met Crazy Bone. And uh, was beatboxing for him in our economics class, and it became a thing. I beatbox, he would be rapping, and then little did I know, Lazy Bone had a math class with Crazy Bone. He used to beatbox with Cray in the class, was, so Cray would go to class with me and beatbox, and bam, cause a ruckus in class. I'm doing a beatbox, but you know, beating on the table. Classes later, he run into my little brother. They doing the same shit. That's crazy. And then um, so. Craig came to me one day and was like, yo, I know this other dude that'll fuck you up and be boxing. I was to challenge each other. Like, nigga, ain't nobody doper than me in this school with beatboxing, nigga. Who would bring this shit on? <laughs> so he set up the little beatbox challenge and all of the, you know, beatboxes and the rappers coming in. And he's like, and then I'm with my little brother there. And I'm like, nigga, you know, I ain't knowing this. It's like, like, this is the dude I want you to challenge and beatbox. I was like, man, this is my little brother, nigga. What you talking about? We still, but we still beatboxing, going crazy anyway. Just right, it in. exactly, yeah. You know, and it's like they called us the Twin Towers. So we beatboxing, going back and forth. My 
one of the homies are rapping and I be boxing other homies are rapping and everything, but little did they know, I'm, you know, I'm battling my little brother and beatboxing and, and Craig, that's how he found out that we was brothers, but the coincidence is, 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 is you know, you just can't make that, you can't create that type of storyline. Absolutely, you're right. But that's how we clicked, that's how we first got together, we was called the Band-Aid Boys, killing them, talent shows, hottest shit. At 12 years old. At 12 years old, 12, 13 years old, yep. Yeah. So what? So what led from that point that just started? You know, that you start drifting off that and got yourself and caught up. Like what age you went? You got caught up and got went to jail. And Unfortunately, how far you, know, you was into the music when you start getting into trouble and you went to yeah, jail? Yeah. So you know, and then for me, you would think like, damn, he's this dude, just studious. You know what I'm saying? You had to be street smart. You had to know how to squab. Was it? Mm -hmm. That was a thing. You know what I'm right. saying? We was we was super sweet with the hands and all of that other stuff. But then again. You know, you wanted to make money, so you start selling, doing whatever you can to make money on, on the, the dope thing. That's when dope, dope shit came into the picture. Right. And um, and uh, things started taking that shape when niggas started wanting to get that quick buck like that. I was still trying to. I was like, got my first job at KFC and was working that stuff, doing real good. But I would take that mm. to make this work too. Okay. Okay. And then, then things develop like that. And then uh, it, it, for me, it, it started taking a turn when I got cracked with some with a with a bunch of dope. Okay. At what age was this? This was like I was like seventeen or something like okay. that. Okay. And then um, and then uh, I had to make a decision: Do I escal? Because they let me out. Do I escal? I ended up I ended up instead of now I was on break from college that one time. Ended up breaking from that, and um, and um, not great. I had to really put. Decide whether and, 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 and what to do. You dig what I'm saying? And it was a lot of shit going on. Whether um, so, my mom's was like, "Yo, you might, might you might have to skip out on this one because mm -hmm. I don't want you to get into a situation where they end up locking you up and you miss you know you miss out on your little college situation." So I was like, "Fuck it, did it," and I ended up moving to the West Coast and just didn't go to court. None of that. I skipped all of that shit. Ended up going to the West Coast right. to live with some homies that was balling on the West Coast and they was doing their little college thing. So I went to go stay with them. And then, you know, Lord, Lord, uh, uh, and, 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 and little do you know, lo and behold, it was a lot of activity going on in the West Coast in the early 90s back in the day like that. Right. I mean, shit was popping. And, then, and I was like, man, this ain't nothing like Cleveland, man. Like everywhere you look, niggas is on. You know, the rap scene was hot. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? And I, and I was doing something. I was like, I was out, out there making, flowing on some shit that was unheard of. And I was kind of like, you know, I was finding myself in a little battle rap here, battle rap there. You know, in the sake of entertainment. And I was so like... at that point when you was hustling at, 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 at that age, you was... Yeah. At that point, you was rapping already hard. Mm -hmm. It was already yeah. We was already the shit. I was uh, my name. My rap name was BD Rock. I was just, I, I was I was already the shit when it came to to flow, story raps, and all that shit. I was I was a cold nigga, lyrically at right. a young age and shit. All of that shit. So then you got knocked. And then you got 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 hit. Got knocked, and then um had to make a move. I went out, decided to go to the West Coast. Right. Stay with the big homies that was out there, had a little apartment going to uh, mm. community college and shit and uh, doing their thing. And shit, they was like the colleges, the parties. They took me to a couple of, uh, they took me to this club that was owned by Prince. And mm. there was some rapping motherfuckers up in there. And I was like, you know what? I'm hotter than these niggas. You know what I'm saying? I'm hotter. I, like, I got a crew of niggas. That my brothers is like they we hotter than this, so I was like, you know what, fuck that. I'm gonna find a way to get if if me and my if brothers is gonna make it, it's not gonna be in Cleveland. Hmm. We had to figure out a way to get the fuck out of Cleveland. Homies was dropping like flies. One, you know, the homies, you know, getting caught up with shit, getting long time, dying off and shit. So I'm like, yo, I get on the payphone, I get on the phone with Lay. Like, yo, bro, you got to come out here, man. The shit is where it's at. And that's what happened. I ended up going back um, to round them up. And we did this thing. We did the hustling thing. Um, I even uh, got my little gig at KFC and everything so I can get front money to do other shit. Right. With. Mm -hmm. And um, ended up going back to California. And, um, and, it, and it worked out because we were able to be in 
the hot seat and network. We went around, we networked real hard and ended the, the door. That's just right before you went to that's just right before you went to jail. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then it went out there, got got knocked. Uh, um, um, uh, uh, that was that little situation. And then um the one the one Lobel was talking about was after we made it and everything, some shit came up. And the cold thing about that is that once we met Easy E, he was able to help me go back and clear up my old drug charges and I was free of that shit. Okay. So a shit came full circle in a sense when it comes to that. Everything came full circle in a, in a, whole, in a whole lot of different ways. So, but coming to LA provided the opportunity for to be able to um, 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 create that way. That door opened when we called Eric Wright, spoke to him and auditioned him on the phone. That was a, that shit took off. But for me, the barrier, what was in the way, was the fact that drugs came into the picture. Mm. And the alcohol came into the picture, you know, and 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 uh, mm. it's it's one of those things where even now, you know, I do, you know, I you know, I you know, you know, I don't even smoke as much as I used to. I may dabble, dibble, and dabble in everything, right? But I notice that it is what it is when it's dealing with the liquor, bro. Even though I still drink, mm -hmm. it's the liquor puts another twist in the game, no matter what it is. To me, in my humble opinion, and then it came. It was this thing about the angel dust. I'm a, I, I consider myself one of the fortunate ones because the way the shit was brought to me mm. and the shit that I seen how I do other niggas, mm. that shit put me through a spell, bro. Wow, it fucked me up real bad, bro. And I and I and I and I, I, I got off that shit at to me too early of an age, but early enough, I was lucky enough to kick that shit. And honestly, I don't know what, uh, if they say the prison be saving niggas lives, but maybe that shit saved my life because I, I wasn't able to touch that shit for the time I was in there. Yeah, and when I came it was home, all the ones you went to jail. I was good, but the shit- What's that Angel I, Dust? Angel Dust, that's that PCP shit, man, that make motherfuckers feel like they Superman and can you know do all types of other dumb shit that makes you do shit. Outside of yourself, period, bro. Outside irrational. You know what I'm saying? I was behaving irrational. And that's when the trouble had started. Right. Because right when we had kicked the door in, dealing with having our first major uh, national releases and everything, I was already causing trouble with respects of bringing the liability to myself and others. Mm -hmm. Getting locked. I started getting arrested out here. And, um, Got arrested so many times to where I had to go do like a few months, about six months in the county, and then got out. That's when I had an opportunity to do my solo shit. But I was still fucking around with the with the issue with the drug shit mm -hmm. that really, really kind of like all of the opportunities were there for me. So I was lucky in a sense, but. I got in trouble so much one year after another, did the six months, got out, got arrested a couple of more times over the same shit, not focusing, wild shit, wild, dumb. Yeah, you wasn't focused, you was, focused. You was just stumbling over the drugs and all that all yeah. the time. Yeah, I really couldn't, Flesh really couldn't focus the way he really, really could have right. when it came to that. And why? It's because of that, bro, I was drinking too much and I was smoking too much dope. Mm. Straight the fuck up, bro. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? And I look back on that and it's like, and that's why my hustle is so hard today and so clean today because I'm like, man, you could have taught little flesh a, a lot of lessons. You feel what I'm saying? But it is what it is because I got one hell of a story to, when it, it, to, to, to put out there when it comes to this type of shit and what led to me getting that big prison term because they sentenced me to ultimately to 23 years where I did take about half time on it, whatever the case may be. But what just, was the charge? That they, what, charge what was, was the, assault. Assault with a deadly weapon. Okay. And, and, um, and stuff like that. It was always had something to do with, you know, something like that to that effect. So it was, it was so, so, so you went to trial or? Yeah, took it to, ended up taking it to trial in my humble opinion. There was some other deals that was hooked up. They, they gave me a deal to do, go in, do, four or six years, I would have did maybe two or three and got out, but you know, um, um, situations, what led to me d deciding to go ahead and try to beat it and just because that's what it, it should have been at because like, okay, 
they was hoping that the judge and the, and the DA would be lenient. Like, look, 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 get this dude to break. It was a, it was more of a let's make an example out of this motherfucker mm-hmm. version. Because I didn't I didn't pop nobody. All I did was have pistols on me that I brandished. Because mm-hmm. I would have used the motherfuckers because I felt I was in a situation where I was going to have to protect myself. And that's what it was at. And it was fought in court like that. They was like, fuck all that. We not having that. Felt that I was a danger to society and said, no, we got to do this because you are. We got to uh, we got to think about the society in a sense and protecting what shit that you're doing. You need to protect yourself at the same time. So here, put these cuffs on and let's go for this trip. So while all this is happening and you and, and you going back to jail and you you know all you going to trial and all that, where's where's the, your group? I mean, your, the Bone Thugs already exist. I mean, yeah, yeah. When we kicked down the door in, in, in 1994, yeah, like how how did you? Feel? That was I mean, a blessing. Like, that, yeah, was, so so yeah, it was uh for me all this all this sex was happening at the same time. I was able to get in and uh, and uh, drop pieces every now and then. Every now and again, I wasn't able to fully participate as much as I, I, I could have because of being distracted with the with the uh, with the drugs with the issues of you know with the with the drug situation. You feel me? And um and uh, all of the success it was like a, it, it came it came, but I I couldn't stay out of trouble. And then we built such an amazing platform. In the career, at the height of the career, man, we was already the number one selling group in the world at the time. You feel me? And here I am facing all this time. Yeah. And I was hoping to beat it, didn't beat it, unfortunately. And then, you know, what happens when you don't take that deal and you decide to, you know, go through all that measures to fight the case and everything. And they end up giving me all of that time right at the height when we were getting ready to drop another studio LP, videos, all of that tour or stuff was coming. And then I just got knocked off that big ass on top of the world, not mm-hmm. on the bottom of the world with the motherfucker on, the, on your shoulders. Like, and that was, that, that man, words can't describe how, how that hurt, how, how regretful something, something like that is. It's, 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 it's painful, bro. It's painful to be, be the man or be a part of the group that's the man. And then be snatched up out of that. Shit, you in you in you in there, you watching them on TV and the, yeah, the, all the shit. The new records coming out, and I'm like, damn, it's and you know what? That's the, to me, that's like hell within itself. Mm. And you're gonna go do you, know, you in hell when you stuck having to regret something like that. Right. That's, that's hell fire to me, bro. It's fucked up. But it's enough inspiration. It's, it was enough to inspire me to check myself and get my shit on the, on the, cause I'm better than this. I'm better than that. I'm sharper than this. Start working on yourself. Started working on myself. So I'm in a situation. We get there. I'm in there having to deal with that. Mm-hmm. You feel me? While my boys was struggling, doing, not, not doing what they had to do to keep the wheels moving. And it was a great situation because they were able to keep the wheels moving. And keep that whole legacy on the push of of of, of the, kept that the, platform. They kept that yeah. shit rocking and rolling. Mm-hmm. With the records doing all of that, winning the awards, all of that. They kept it moving. And uh, but that whole so you find it, so you so you find it, uh, so you want to get in what? Yeah, how much time? They, well, they but ultimately it was like twenty three years that they chopped that chopped down to like thirteen. I ended up doing about nine tops. And uh, what what uh what what jails you went into? What jails you went to? You know, this L.A. County ain't no damn joke. You know, it's <laughs> that, you know you know. So you know, I was stuck in that motherfucker for a little bit doing my trial and everything. And then they shoot me over there. You know, to a level three yard. I went. I'm fresh. I'm fresh out of. I'm fresh out of my mansion house in the valley mm. into a motherfucking square six block, six by whatever the fuck it was. But it did shit, nigga. I just, just, I'm living in the mansion over here. Facts. Six months later, I'm over here in the motherfucking jail cell. That shit rocked me, man. Yeah. But it forced me to come down and get my shit right in, the, in, a, in a major way. That shit, that shit wasn't cool. Delano, I touched Delano first, then went over to uh, Pleasant Valley, and then uh, from there, I went to a lower level, to uh, down south to a prison called Blythe. And then from Blythe to uh, one of those uh, 
even lower, lower level prisons and shit where they don't, they, they got the, uh, they got the uh, barbed wires around the fence, but no electric fence. And I was like, okay, that's when I knew I was really, really getting ready to get out of there. But damn, bro, nine, eight, eight <laughs> nine years, bro, that shit. No altercations during that time? Yeah. Man, that shit was, man, when I, so, when I first pull up in that mo mojo, Yeah, we want to know what, what kind of altercations you, you got into. So, it? when I first pull up in that motherfucker and I land in my cell, bro, the brothers come drop me off a package. They dropped me off a package. Man, in that package, they had, you know, noodles, soups, soap, and a little kisu wrapped up. And said, this is, and then I'm like, what the fuck is that? What the fuck is that? What the fuck I'm going to do with that? Like, no, you're going to have to have that. Mm. And that was like, that, nigga, I'm, nigga, I just left the streets fucked up from being strapped. You mean to tell me I got to come up in here and be strapped now? And I was like, that shit fucked my head up, man. I was like, I'm sitting back like, these niggas just gave me a knife, bro. Told me don't fucking get caught without it. But what if they catch me with it? Yeah. What if the, what if the COs catch me with it? Mm. And I'm like, what the fuck? But little did I know, that first riot that kicked off that I was in, as soon as I got in there, I, I'm like, okay, okay, this shit crazy. Mm. Because a cold riot got popped off to where a motherfucker got popped, shot by a motherfucker in a tower. So you mean to tell me I'm going against these motherfuckers right here that's trying to stick me. And then them motherfuckers up there aiming whoever they can get that's doing the most damage. So the, shit, so the seal shot somebody and everything. Shot, popped his motherfucking ass, bro. Carried his ass off the fucking yard on his fucking bloody ass stretcher. And you was all out there to y'all. Yeah, man, and uh, yeah, man, I had a couple of I, I had a couple of situations where motherfucker test flesh and bone, thinking that flesh and bone was a motherfucker that don't 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 uh don't, don't throw them things and got no hands. So man, I man, I I dug one of them one of them um, um throwdowns I had, you know, um it was with a dude that they considered a troublemaker. He got at me real strange and real raw. And um, the nigga took off on me, but it wasn't it wasn't good enough because it wasn't I wasn't affected. I ended up beating to a bloody pulp that was so cold. So you get into the squab with the niggas. It's like you know it, it, it depends on who you get into a squab with, whether or not. And the police was back in the back. It was one of those situations they was betting on a motherfucking fight. Mm. They not going and then and after until man, I beat this motherfucker and and and. and, and and kicked his ass up under the bunk until they came and got his bloody ass. And then they took me out, took me to the uh, to to the what's the name, and and that was that. But I had to fight. It was it, it was either me he was gonna beat me to a pope or I'm finna beat him to a pope. Mm. It was that type of shit. And you went to, you went to the box for that? Yeah, went to the box. Went to the box for a few months, sitting up there eating the motherfucking jujus, whatever. How that felt going to the box? That first time in the box. Man, that's I mean, shit. how was it? I mean, tell the people, man. I mean, you already in prison, mm -hmm. but then they put you under the cell in while you're in prison. It's like going to jail while in jail. Mm -hmm. You don't get no phone calls. You don't do shit. You barely get the shit, and you can only flush the toilet twice a day or some shit like that. Crazy. Mm. You feel what I'm saying? It's man, man, way a, a, a whole nother fucking. Um, Were you in the, in the box by yourself? No, 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 dude. No, they, no, they they definitely sell you up. They sell you oh, up. Oh, they, with somebody else. They definitely sell you up for somebody else. Oh, yeah, okay, okay. Had to okay. do that shit. No. And how many months you did in the hole? It's like two months. Okay, like two. But months. I've been that was. I had to do that shit about at least four, four or five times, and then um, all squab, all fisticuffs too. You know what I'm saying? What all, do you mean? The, like, like, or all, all going knuckling up on, you oh, know, fight. like, yeah, yeah, oh, fights. motherfuckers, motherfuckers would, you know, was like, because motherfuckers was like, you know, it, I was getting a lot of, I was getting a lot of, uh, a lot of motherfuckers still respected, you know what I'm saying? And then he got a- They knew who you were? They knew who I was, off the rip. It was a mother, man, I had, I had fans up in there, I had big fans up in yeah, there. That's but, what I'm saying, yeah. But the negative side of that is that- Somebody ain't gonna like that because motherfuckers is showing me the type of love that they really don't show motherfuckers in the pen because I was able to, even though the, even though the prison is segregated, right? They keep that the blacks over here, the whites over here, the Mexicans over here, the Southerners over here, the Northerners over here, like just like that. 
But them motherfuckers didn't give a fuck. And when any opportunity that they get, the essays want to do whatever the case may be. The, the essays rap too. Okay, they want to have a little circle. So I go do a circle over there with them dudes over there, whatever. I might kick it with these motherfuckers over here. And that did become an issue. Like, man, my nigga, you can't be, no, no, you can't be doing that shit. You can't be fucking with the essays, homie. That's what they, that's what, like, like homie, like. Okay, Who was so, telling you that? The, the, uh, the, uh, the blacks. Uh -huh. Like, nigga, what the fuck is you doing? You got one more time getting caught. You ain't even supposed to be over there. So, you know what I'm saying? What the fuck you doing over there? You trying to kick some shit off? And then it wasn't even like that. But they gave me a pass anyway. Mm. But then too many motherfuckers was like, nigga, I don't give a fuck who you is, nigga. I'll stump you out right now. Okay, let's get it in then. Mm. And then, but Flesh, it was one of them things. Yeah, okay, let's see what this nigga do. Bro, I, I, brought, I brought up, I was raised fighting like a motherfucker for my life already, mm. which I thank God for. I thank God. Thank you. I, uh, thank you for letting me be able to know what it's like to get my ass kicked and learn how to fight. Facts. Because they would have fucking mocked you up, period. If you, if you one of the motherfuckers that's not going to stand up, you the motherfuckers get at you like that, bro, they'll walk right, smooth over you. But I made that and I developed that rep that like, this nigga's a squabber and he just might stab your ass so you might want to leave him the fuck alone. And that's what I, that's that, that's what, that's what I had to yeah, that's what I had to deal with, but it was it fucked me up real bad, bro. It it was a uh, I, I, you know from communicating with the family, being in there, communicate with the family, and understand uh, understood all of the missed opportunities. Mm -hmm. It was torture. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, but we made it. We it was it. hard for you. It was hard. It was hard. It was it was one of them. It was one of them rough ones, bro. It was it was real hard. It was real hard, man. I don't, but I made it. But at the same time, do you, yeah. seeing your seeing your brother on TV, you know the, yeah. the group, you know, you know, I mean, they popping, bow and thugs, you know, they out there doing their thing. <clears throat> Regardless, you was in jail and you was, you know, you was. You, I mean, it wasn't easy, but at the same right. time, you was looking at them like, you know, you, you yeah. still accomplished a lot. You know what I'm saying? Your brother's yeah. out there. That's your brother. Yeah, did. Yeah. And it's, it felt it felt real fortunate. And my main thing, one of the things that I prayed hard on was for homies, for the brothers to. Keep smashing. You know what I'm saying? Of course. You know, you get this, you have it. You know what I'm saying? I, 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 I did. You know, I fell off my I fell off my little square and had to get back on my square, but it was a life lesson. And then I had to I really, really wanted them to be able to keep smashing and taking advantage of doing what you do, feeding the world great yeah. music. Do, do what that. you love. Do it, keep doing it. And 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 by the grace of God, yeah, they keep they kept doing it. And, uh, you know, and, um, Busy had a little, his little spell. He split up for him for a minute. And then it was Cray Lay and Wish. Right. They was rocking. They did the Strength and Loyalty album together. with, And, and they ended up winning a couple of awards. Or that American Music Award for Best Single. Facts. And what, you know, with A I think one of them, I think the song with Akon or some shit like that. Um, the I Tried. Uh, one of them motherfucking um, mm -hmm. uh, records on that Strength and Loyalty album. But they did it. I'm like, damn, dope. And this was like was the, 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 yeah. our tribe was on it was still yeah that uh, 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 strength yeah I'm in that yeah. movie yeah you and the, you and that yeah yeah I remember seeing that man I remember yeah, yeah. Seeing, I don't know if I saw it while I was in the pen or when I got home I can't remember but the shit was epic bro <laughs> yeah, we had we Nipsey Hustle in there yeah we, we had, had a lot of fun. Of, you had a lot of cat you was that y'all 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 did a great job yeah with that, we man. had a lot of fun. That's what's up. That's what's so up. So, Flush, what 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 um year you came home? I came home in two thousand. Uh, uh, was that July two thousand eight? Two thousand eight. Yeah. And how was that? I mean, at yeah. that point, you know, seeing your brothers going back, and yeah. how was it coming home? You know, after doing, you know, they uh what nine years? Yeah, they showed up and showed out, man. It was it was epic. You know what I'm saying? They they should, they pulled up and they pulled up. Uh, and what was it? Uh, they pulled up in a um in a tour bus. Mm. They pulled up in that motherfucker on the, in a tour bus, bro, and picked me up on a tour bus with a studio on it, and um, had me draped up. Gave me, you know, some sand fresh Jordan kicks and all of that shit. I was like, oh shit, I'm back. These niggas just picked me up and dudes <laughs> out there showing the news, showing this big ass tour bus pulling up and shit. Like, okay, so the dudes showed up in style, man. And the thing that really, really kicked it off is that all of them was on that motherfucker. The whole group, whole group. That was that was that was definitely legend. Y'all pulled off that motherfucker, man. It was like, yo, nigga, 
yo, you ready? You ready? You ready to go? And I'm like shining. I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm like glowing really though because my skin is yeah, yeah, yeah. That's how you come home. Yeah, you you know glowing. What I'm I'm, I'm you got that shine. You got you know that what I'm shine. Saying? I'm with that glow. And um, motherfuckers went straight to the studio. Bam, straight to the work. Did about maybe 15, 20 songs back to back and was ready to drop the album that, that would eventually be called The Unify, the uh, Bone, uh, Bone Thugs Unify, The World's Enemy. And uh, and then shit, we recorded about 50, 60 records though. You feel what I'm saying? Eventually we started leaking them or whatever and whatnot, but it was like still kicking ass. We recorded so much music. My first week out, it was like, nigga, we was on fire. And I'm like, I couldn't believe it. I really couldn't believe it. So, and that's one of the things that I feel so blessed and fortunate about because I was locked up with lifers, cats that been in there 20, 30, 40 years. And uh, bro, they, and the ones that are getting out, some that did have something before they left, bro, they don't come home. They don't, they don't have that, bro. No, and it's hard for them because right. they don't got that support. You know what I'm saying? And I, you know, and, and my, my, my boys were saying that, they, yeah, they, the support is there, but you never know until you get there, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You never know. You, you, it always sounds good. It always sounds good. Until, until you come home and it's real, huh? Right, and then, and then they came home and it was real, it was solid. And I'm back into, this, and I'm back into the mix. And, and for me, it was like, bro, if like, you know, I would, I would uh, dealing with the cats that introduced me to... Uh, um, smoking Sherm and shit, I regret that shit so much. Any big homie mm. that's really your big homie ain't gonna do no shit like that to you. Right. Man, straight the fuck up. Mm -hmm. But I had to go through that shit, man. And um, Yeah, there was a learning experience. You went through it. You came, I mean, you came home. You've been home since, right? Right. I've been home since, yeah. Flesh, what's the worst thing you've seen when you was in prison? From, wow. As far as from the perspective of anybody, like either yourself that you yeah. did or somebody that you see get banged out? Yeah, yeah. One of the worst things I saw was, you know, somebody actually getting popped on the yard and, 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 and seeing motherfuckers, a, a dead body being carried off the yard. That was the worst to me. Mm -hmm. But then again, you know, just seeing, seeing how motherfuckers dealt with their own. I seen, I seen the, the, the Mexicans up in there um, wipe some of their own out, doing, doing shit to another race mm -hmm. and causing a drama. About yeah, it, and, yeah. then, and then they come, the way I saw them discipline they own, like, and there was no mercy. They fucking, you know, they, 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 let, they let them, they let their own people have it for bringing drama on their own situation. Yeah. And I've seen that. It just seems, yeah. like, it's, it's, yeah. it just seems to me like that's always yeah. been the issue of, of, um, of, 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 um, like being in gangs and shit. Yeah. 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 Since I, I mean, from my experience of me being in prison and stuff, right. I always seen, it seems like the, your own kind and your own people is, is the ones that bang you out first. Yeah, and that's, yeah, and that's what it was. They do. They dealt they they so so with their you own. See, so you seen some crazy shit. Yeah. Uh, got, body. Yeah, body. Yeah, them. yeah that body them, bro. Body them. My body bag. You been home since 07, huh? Since, uh, uh, since, uh, since 08. Since 08. So, so since 08. You, and then, you've been um, home? Yeah, I've been home. And I did have a couple of hiccups. Okay, yeah, you did. You told me you got, what, a couple of violations? Yeah, 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 how, violations. How, how, how that felt going back well, for that violation? Yeah, man, it was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was weird, man, because you ain't supposed to be catching, you know, I'm like really trying to get back into the swing of shit. Some shit happening. Here I am back in... To, uh, I'm, I'm right back in the situation. Even Steve, to, to Steve there to help me get attorneys and shit. Yeah, you see what I'm saying? To help save my ass one more again. And then you know we got a great attorney that came in and argued my case, and they end up dropping it. But once again, the shit costed the arm and leg. And who wants the fuck? I just got home, man. I don't got time to be spending no fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on no goddamn attorney. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Who wanted to do that, man? I couldn't believe I was back in that situation. Yeah, you was like embarrassed for yourself. Yeah, like, hell what the yeah. Fuck I'm like, man, what doing? the fuck is this, man? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I just, I just got home. How long was the violation for? It was I only it was about. I had to go through about three, four months fighting it. They never sent me back upstate, but it was just a danger of being in that situation. I did get them at least four more months extra. But I'm like, man, something got to give, man. I, I'm what you mean you got four, four? Four months in the county. Okay. Going back and forth to court, seeing whether or not they was going to lock me yeah. up for life or not. Exactly. And then you finally beat it. Finally beat it. Came home. Yeah. I was, 
I wish we would have beat the first time in trial the way the attorney came in and beat that shit and had them throw that out because of the way the cops came in and broke through um, the, my, the, uh, my wife's shit and then, you know, try to, you know, do, do the shit that they did, but they broke doors and locks off doors and, you know, it, it, it saved the day. And, uh, but yeah, that, that who, and, that, and I'm like, wow, man, I'm, I'm, I'm back in the fucking county, my nigga, the face in life. I'm like, what the fuck wrong? What the fuck is wrong? I was like, I quit. I quit. God damn it. I'm done. I don't want to do this shit no more. I quit. What the fuck? I ain't, I wasn't tripping. I wasn't doing nothing. Right. It was just okay, you know, but that's how they treat you when you're on probation. You right. around anything. It's like, you know, what's yours is mine just because I'm on probation. Mm -hmm. And they kept doing that. I would get pulled over, whatever the case may be, and be riding with a homie that's hot or got something, whatever the case may be. They, bam, okay, they take me in, whatever. And do that, but that's that's what it, that's that's the life you live. Dude. That's when you win that boat, you gotta deal with it. Now it's okay, cool, but let me do my time. Let me go through my little purgatory. Let me get my shit together. But after, let me do that. But then give me some credit because I just I just yeah. did that. I changed my shit. I got my life back right. Give me some motherfucking credit. Give me my shit. Give leave me the fuck alone. I'm trying to live my life, but we kind of like live in a society they don't give a fuck mm -hmm. if you change your life around. Mm -hmm. Because they gonna like that's and that and I and I'm and I'm trying to get over that bitterness mm -hmm. and I want to see it as yes if you make it if you do it you take advantage of it you create your own way yeah I believe in that you feel what right. I'm saying and uh, yeah but they don't like I mean, man, you I was change, tired. You, I mean you yeah. came you you finally you know shut it down mm -hmm. you ain't been back since you focus that's the huge part that's what I'm saying so you, you should you know be proud of yourself and feel good about it yes I feel good about it bro you know what I'm saying. Like, and it's like a balance for me. If it, it wouldn't have never been an issue, had not it been for you know smoking Sherm and shit like that's a huge issue. Yeah. But now you know I know how to figure out. Like I still sip, I still drink, and everything. But it's a balance. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah. You, you got control of the shit now. I got control. You're not trying of this to get to now. exactly. As long as you know right. your, your step. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that's what it's about, man. So um, yeah. Flesh, I want to ask you. Um, yeah. Uh, what you think about uh, jail reform? In general, jail, yeah, jail. Jail reform. Like what you think is necessary? You know, you know what's, I think it helps. I think it's there, and I think it's a way um, uh, with reform. When them judges say, when that judge told me, I hopefully, hopefully you can reform yourself and get your life together. I didn't know. I, I really wasn't trying to hear that shit. I was like, I was looking at that number and doing math. You know, I'm good at math, so I'm looking at okay, that's a hundred and twenty months. <laughs> <laughs> Them numbers I'm be still, crazy, I'm, right? I'm just looking at the paper. I ain't giving a fuck what she talking about reforming and all this shit. All I'm looking is at the 120 months. Like, what the fuck? You start writing that shit, you be like, damn. Yeah. I'm like, how the fuck am I going to write that on the wall? One yeah. day, two day, three day. Oh, all the way up to... <laughs> there's a lot of markers on the wall. But, uh, nice. but yeah, man, They the thing is, is that... When it comes to reform in prison, they do provide opportunities that's real. Like for one, you can't, you're not going to be in prison and not do something constructive or positive. They had for me, one of the first thing I got off into was silk screen and screen printing. Mm -hmm. And then brick masonry, learn, learning how to like put the walls and the plasters and, and build a whole brick wall and structure around that when it came to that shit. I know how to build shit now. So you was in general population? Yeah. I was in general population. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't had I wasn't fuck I wasn't having all that lock my ass up by myself. PC is like a light. I hear a lot of people do that. But that that wasn't my cup of tea. Okay. That was not my cup of tea. You know, and uh and uh and uh, a lot of folks do that and then when you do that, you know, you don't you can't really uh, breathe much as far as you know having access to the outside world dealing with folks phone calls the commissary stuff of that nature but they do have opportunities in there where you can really really take advantage of computer science i did computer science learning how to do shit and this is one one when i first came home one of the first things i started working on was developing my own website and i'm trying to get deeper into that right you know what i'm saying i'm still taking courses just like how I got in there, I was always a studious person in the first place. Mm. I'm like, damn, man, I'm in, I'm in prison and I'm back in school. Weird, bro. And that was one of the ways of ref, uh, 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 reforming in prison. Right. It was a way for me to really, really start, you know, focus, reading, 
learning how to grow plants and everything. I was in there, we was in there having the, they bring the seeds in and everything and you can grow your own cilantro, lettuce, tomatoes and all of that shit and we eating organic, organic fruits and vegetables that we fucking grew ourselves. Right. And, um, and, um, uh, landscaping. I learned a lot in landscaping. I learned, like I said, learned how to do the, the press. Flesh, you I, was I, I learned how to press t-shirts. You was t-shirts and shit. Flesh, you was like, let yeah. me get this shit in. And that's the crazy part, bro. All of the, you know, because I do silk screen and I, I, right. I started doing that shit in prison at first. Now I got my own print, print mm-hmm. shit. I mm-hmm. print my own shit, but I learned that shit in prison. Mm-hmm. You feel me? I plant my own garden right now, but I planted my first garden when I was in prison. Right. And then all of the shit I did, this is why my jeans be so fresh because they showed me how to de- do the uh, the dry cleaning, but the big press, boom, yeah, dry yeah, cleaning, yeah. put that shit on the hook, bam, wrap that shit up. Mm-hmm. And uh, man, and then with like the computer shit, they do the computer class, it just show you how to take the specs and everything and how to do the shit with your website. And I'm like, you know what, fuck that. Flesh and Bone Global was the dot com. I dropped that shit. As soon as I was able to get all of this shit figured out, then I put out my own website. It was like, damn, I was talking big shit about it. So I was like, fellas, I'm just So you still doing your thing with the website, yeah, well, working yeah, on your yeah, shit? Yeah, I, I, so, you know, I made a power move, had to get to the East Coast, and I had to plug it, unplug it, but I'm getting ready to go back with it now. Now that I got my new project, I got a new project out that's been out a couple of months. It's called Do You. What is it? Got nine songs on it. It's a Flesh and Bone, um, um, flesh and bone album, consists of nine songs. Hot records from top to bottom. There you go. You hear that? Go get that. So do you, Flesh and Bone, out on all digital platforms right now. It's an album that you will enjoy. I don't care who your favorite, whatever you're listening to right now, you are going to find most of that album is going to be something that you can rock with and enjoy. Just whatever. But guarantee, Bone Thugs don't, don't, don't disappoint. I don't, I will at least, that's my humble opinion. And I got right. something, you know, right. I got something, I got something. That's that's just getting ready to this. It's 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 bubbling on its own. So you know, it's something that I dropped during this whole. Let's give it up for flesh, man, for working hard, man, doing the thing, man. We love it. We love it. We love it. We love it. Um, why you uh um one last question um why you uh do you how, <clears throat> how you feel about you know shows like this and stuff like that? You the importance for you know. Are you, for the kids and stuff like that, you you feel like shows like this are important for the for the youth. Man, I think what you're doing is uh, it, it it takes a a, a, a man with a, a lot of heart, and uh, it, it proves that you, uh, you're a leader because it's a way of of, of reaching out and giving uh, information and uh, pulling people in to explain and express mm-hmm. and, uh, 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 their experiences. A lot of people that may not be that might be going through certain situations. A lot of people don't have too much uh, uh, situations in order to be able to draw any aspiration and and too much hope from. Mm -hmm. So platforms like this is definitely uh, a a key, Mm -hmm. a key to to being able to, you don't know who is going to reach and help them do something or make a decision they would otherwise do something out of the norm and end up you know, end up in a worse situation. End up like, like you did. Yeah, you end up like me. You end, you end up like me. You end up in prison. You end up losing. You end up losing everything you had. And mm-hmm. uh, and uh, I, I don't think that that that's not cool. That's not cool. A lot of little homies they like to talk that 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 shit um, uh, about. Yo, yeah, I did. They're bragging about going to the county and shit. Like, man, my nigga, you want to know how many opportunities you miss, my nigga? You can't make no motherfucking fuck. You can't. You can't make no motherfucking. Um, and money in, no, in prison like that. Mm-hmm. You can't make no babies. You can't have, you know, you thought that, like, dude, you got to be one crazy motherfucker <laughs> if you're talking about you enjoying some shit like that. Facts. You, know, you know, I love my wife and I was just like, women, my, my wife is, is my rock, my brick, my moon, my stars, and, 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 and my inspirator, the one that light the fire up under my ass and I can't even... Like, no, 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 leave me alone. Let me dress myself. So I shut the fuck up and let her do what she do because that's what she want to do. Mm. You know, I just put this motherfucker, tie that shoe that way. <sighs> fuck it. No, but you yeah, see what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I wish I had that back then. Mm-hmm. But I'm learning how to live in a situation where this is my partner. And that's the thing for me too. Going through that and then having somebody solid like that because like, damn, you know, some of us need that shit. Facts. I need that shit. Straight the fuck up. 
because no God knows what other type of shit that I would be in if I didn't have a solid one. Mm. You feel me? And uh, and uh, that's 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 that's, that's what's up, Flash. Yeah. That's what's up, man. Let's give it up, all the ladies. So so Flash, uh, um, uh, I guess I was in prison at that time. At that at that time, right? So right. you got you got you got to do a a, a single with uh. Yeah. With Terror Squad. You know, with tell Terror me a little Squad, bit about man. that. How, how was that? Man, I love these dudes, man, so much, man. The Terror Squad, man, every time we came to New York, man, it was a blessing. They rolled the carpet out for us. Stilo Bell would pick me up and everything. And, you know, I'm going to take you to go fuck with Joy Crack and all that stuff, man. And then uh, I had a session in there. And um, I had a session in New York. And uh, and I had a plug with uh, um, uh, uh, for, uh, Fat Joe to come through. So we prep in the studio. Um, for uh, Fat Joe to come through, track up, rocking hot and everything. And he comes through with this cat, you know what I'm saying? And uh, his name was um, Big Pun. Met him and everything. And he's in there like he's real quiet and everything. We in there got the beat going. We don't know that and he's in there right. You know, we not, I'm not tripping. I'm in there scribbling and everything, getting it in. And it was in me and Joy Crack spitting, you know, lines back and forth. Yeah, that vibe, man. And then Big Pun came over and said, yo, check this out. Let me know how you feel this. And he spits this flaming hot ass hook. And I'm standing there and all like, what the? F and that's a no brainer. Mm -hmm. So this is how I met him. And he was able to feature on that record, one of the hottest records on that album, mm -hmm. hands down. And uh, it was a rest great experience for me. Rest in peace, Big Pun. Rest in peace, Big, big Pun, Big Homie. And, uh, and he blessed my album like that. And that was, uh, uh, and a lot of people don't know it, but The Flesh's record was Big Pun's first national feature. Wow. That was his first, that was the first, first one that he kicked it off. That was that early, that was that early yeah. Big Pun joint. And then the way he was spinning, it was undeniable. It was undeniable. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. Well, Flesh, man, I want to thank you for coming by, it's man. It's been a pleasure. It was brother. definitely honor, man. I appreciate, appreciate you know, having you, my yes, family. Absolutely. You know? yes, so, sir. you already yes, know. Sir. It's that dog in the yard, and it's that yard talk with your boy Pistol Pete. You already know, flesh and bone, boom thugs. What's up, what's up, people? Welcome back to that yard talk with your boy Pistol. I want to first and foremost thank my brother, Flesh and Bone, for coming through and sharing his experience, his prison time, you know, his trials and tribulations of being away while his group was gone, how they started, you know what I mean, how he felt, you know what I mean, it was deep. And it was real, you know what I'm saying? I want to just put, point it out out there. I want to just point that out that, you know what I'm saying? In this show, you know what I'm saying? We let all walls come down and we just keep it all floating and all real. You know what I'm saying? So with that all being said, I want to thank my brother Flesh and Bone from the legendary group Bone Thugs and Harmony for coming through, man. You already know. Salute, man. Y'all talk. But before we go, don't forget that merch. Let's get ready, you know what I'm saying? Because the summer's coming. Let's get them T-shirts, let's get them hats. I want to see my peoples out there with that dog in the yard items, you know what I'm saying? With that, with that, with that, with that merch. So let's get on it. Stay blessed. You already know it's your boy Pistol. Y'all talk. <laughs> Splash. One, two. This is a step. This is how gangsters do it. Splash, step, one, two. I'm in a whole lot of zones. Zones, they look like kalanoscopes. I got the white for the white boy that's sniffing the shit in these eat on the slopes. I got the can for that lady that thinks she could take it, but know that she can't. I got that work for that work that's gonna work right after it works. Look, I put.